Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Photographer's Favorites. This is the show where I pick five of my favorite photos from other photographers and my guest picks five of their favorite photos and we talk about everything we love about them. Today, I'm really excited to have with me Charlotte Grineau. Hey, Charlotte, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Yeah, how's, uh, how's life been in your area lately? Life has been good. Um, I just moved to Bowen Island uh, where my parents live. And uh, that's a little island in Howe Sound, just off of West Vancouver. In okay. And yeah, it's been really great. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, spot to live, and I feel very lucky. And so I'm yeah. looking forward to checking out all the the island has to offer. Excellent. Uh, did you have you always lived in that general area of the country? Yeah, I was living on Vancouver Island before. Okay. Um, and I've been there for about you know the past nine years or so um nice and grew up in horseshoe bay so yeah pretty close okay yeah all right excellent i mean incredible area to grow up huh yeah it's like it's like yeah. top you know i feel really really lucky so yeah no doubt i want to just real quick i was just scrolling through your feed while we're uh we're chatting here this photo mm -hmm. like so well done absolutely Thank love you. it <laughs> yeah that is so cool i mean was this something you went out specifically to capture this shot or just yeah. kind of Came upon yeah, I, I have actually been staring at the full moon for the past like <laughs> couple years and being like, I really want a bird silhouette. Like I'll take any bird. I yeah, actually yeah. really want a great horn owl. As you can see the little That'd be horn. cool. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, but I was like, any <laughs> any bird will do. Yeah. And um, But it's harder, obviously, to like set that up and to find birds at night. But yeah. there's this. Uh, this spot kind of in Burnaby where all these crows come to roost at night. And um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was actually harder than I thought it was going to be because oh, really? crows, they get really skittish at night. So oh, it's wow. like it's super hard to get close to them. Whereas in the day they're, you know, fine. Interesting. Um, you would yeah, think it'd so be the other actually, way around somehow. Yeah. It was really difficult. Yeah to to frame this up um because they just didn't want to stay where uh, i was <laughs> yeah uh, but i was really happy that i was able to kind of capture really good. what i wanted and uh, i like the the rim lighting on it so. yeah that little bit right there is such a nice touch and a crow is such a great shape too you know like such a classic really? you know uh, yeah, identifiable bird shape so it's good it's a good bird to have against the the full moon kind of eerie. totally is Totally yeah. is. All right. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks for your quick introduction. You ready to get into the show? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So we'll start with the first photo that you chose. I mean, come on. What more do we have to say about this? It's like the most adorable photo. I, I don't even know. Oh, it's a Martin. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah as, and is this a young one? I wonder. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it, it, I don't know. But it looks kind of fresh. Like. The, yeah. The, right. It, right. It's got some of those smaller features like like it's not a full adult kind of thing you know like extra large paws and stuff like that but the pose on this is great um absolutely love the soft light there and then just those splashes of green and the ferns and you know it i really like that this is such a it's such an in habitat shot it's such a um this was just i just found this you know and it's not like overly clean like i feel like and, and i do it all the time right most of the photos i share are you know i try to make everything perfect and capture everything perfect and no no branch out of place and that sort of stuff and while those are pretty there's maybe an element of less realness to them i would say and this shot just kind of strikes me as just this is the moment you know it just was this was what happened right there nothing was overly um cleaned up or anything like that or staged or set up and uh the eye contact and the curiosity of this martin that you get in this shot like really jumps out at you and yeah i just love how like the one little fern is like tucked under its paw there and the other one coming across like all those little elements just work so well with this one yeah no i actually i really like um what you said about that um because i tend to favor shots that are like that that look a little bit less kind of uh, staged or set up. Um, yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's just like, this is like a real moment, yep. you know, it happened quickly. And, um, yeah, what I like about this is that I feel like most Martin shots I see, they look kind of like they're like sort of caught in the ash. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. 
and this one just looks like maybe it is a juvenile because it looks kind of curious and like it, it really looks does. like it's like really posing um yeah. and those paws are just ridiculous yeah. um <laughs> yeah, they are. so insane and um yeah i love that that fern coming over the the top um there and just like sort of gently brushing and like the one underneath and um just that like bright orange contrast yeah um, but with the green it's really beautiful yeah i've never seen one with that orange patch like that so that's what, another thing that makes me wonder i don't know if it's just unique to the individual or an age thing or anything like that i don't know much about them so uh it would yeah, be curious i've to never know. actually seen a merton um i've seen like the uh the american mink before okay yep i've seen them like orange but i think all martins at least the ones that we have over here have that like really beautiful orange but maybe oh nice okay as vibrant. i don't know gotcha um, yeah nice. i'm really hoping to see one so it's kind of yeah you know, <laughs> get on that <laughs> dream shot you know <laughs> yeah. yeah totally yeah and then just uh, you know the more i look at it too i mean the clarity on this is just absolutely perfect and you just get to see like the detail of all the little whiskers sticking out and everything so uh, yeah this is so a photo cool. that would love to see large like big you know on a yeah. Screen. yeah yeah yeah, I actually talked to her about this shot and she was just like casually just like, oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, <laughs> that shot is amazing. Like, she was so like modest about it. <laughs> yep, yep. Isn't She's it like, funny okay, how that works that sometimes? Like, yeah. yeah. Like it works dream. that way about photos and it works that way about species sometimes because some people have species that are just common in their area or they worked with a lot and they've seen them. And then you talk to somebody that's not from that area and it's just like the most mind blowing thing to even, yeah. you know, have an encounter with them, you know, yeah. uh, and they're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Cool. Here's one I chose. Yeah, this is gorgeous um i love i i love shots with like big snowflakes coming down yeah. in the back with like oh it's just something about it just makes it just like you know like if that wasn't there it would just be a totally different um a totally different shot yep. and yeah i really love the the snow on the berries and just kind of like makes you think about how how light the bird actually is because you know if that had landed there and it was heavy enough, all that would have fallen off. Great point. And, uh, yeah, the, the color, like the bright, the bright yellow and, uh, just contrasting with that, that gorgeous red is just like, it so jumps cool. out. And this is a, this is a pine gross beak or pine gross beak, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I've only seen, I've only seen gross beaks like once. Okay. Been, Cananaskis area so um so it's pretty cool to see a different bird that i'm not used to seeing um yeah but i love the upside down kind of like yeah. it sort of like takes your eye around the image and um and then you kind of end up right where the the head is with the bear right where the action is <laughs> yeah it's so beautiful yeah yeah, I love yeah it's great i love that you pointed out how light that they are when they don't even knock snow off the branches um just absolutely incredible, isn't it? That they can land so just perfectly sometimes to not disturb something. Like I feel like if you walk by briskly, you're going to blow up the snow off, you know, and mm -hmm. yet they can land there like that. So that's, that's such a wonderful point that you brought up. Yeah. I love that. I love that little foot grabbing on, like, like it's not even, it looks like it's like in between one of the, it toes. is. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty, yeah. That's pretty cool. It is neat. It's that, and that's something you don't get to see a lot of either. You know, in, in either in bird photography or in real life when you're watching birds is just the way that they grip things. So whenever something grips it in an odd way, it always does kind of stand out. You know, it, it jumps out at you. Yeah. And yeah. the like snow on the beak is really, yep. really nice too. I love yeah. that. Yeah. There's uh, the bird itself. And this is so rare. It makes such a nice curve in the image yeah. just from tail. And then even having the wings stick up like that. And it just, it really does. And then the angle of the branch just everything for me just draws you in from that top right corner and then just zeroes in right here yeah, where there's like, about to have something happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know there's people, I know there's like some golden spiral thing, like an overlay for crops, which I never ever use or, or bother to pay attention to, but this is probably one of those images that would like fit that perfectly maybe or not. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, it seems like it would be. <laughs> yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. 
and the colors you can't can't get any better yeah, like you the said the colors are just ridiculous i think that, that that's a female right because i think the i believe the are red so that yes. would have been interesting but i like i like the yellow and yeah the, and yeah, I totally agree. That color contrast uh, does make it. It's nice when birds kind of match, but it, then is there's also an element of having them stand out too. You know, it, it can totally work either way, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the absolute clean background just makes everything jump out of you. Zero distraction back there. Yeah. Not, not even a little bit. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so good. Love the different like levels of snow yep. creating little light. And going back to what we were just talking about on the previous photo, you know, not stage, right? It's a real moment. The bird's feeding. Like, there's there's behavior there. There's action there. It's not just a portrait, um, which to me, for me anyway, is a difficult thing to capture all the time. Like, I have, I mean, I would say 95% of my photography is all just portraits of animals. And so to get that that interesting behavior happening is so much more difficult, I find. Yeah, honestly, I have very little, like songbird good songbird shots because because i don't really do like a lot of stage stuff i just kind of like yeah. walk around with my camera and yeah and that's why i don't have very <laughs> photos yeah. of songbirds because they're just like impossible to like get yeah. in a good spot and like yep. have no distractions and yeah yeah totally and that it's funny i've i've never really done a ton of stage i've never like brought perches with me from home or anything like that but I, i've totally you know sought out areas or or found like a nice perch that's laying in an area where I'm working with some birds and moved it to a better spot. I've totally done that kind of stuff. But more and more as time goes on, I find myself gravitating towards wanting to shoot and just enjoying shots where it was just, you know, shooting through the foliage and just making it work. And, and there's, there's less success right there. But when they do turn out, I feel like, again, they, they look more natural and there there's almost an a more interesting element of surprise that comes from the photo because it wasn't controlled in certain ways. So yeah, totally. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at that scene. All right. So this, I love shots like that. This is a perfect <laughs> reoccurring theme for this show uh, because anytime a shot comes up like this and I love bringing this up, it's the kind of shot where take the wildlife out. It's an amazing shot. Anyway, it's just a gorgeous scene with just, I mean, come on, like four trees lined up perfectly <laughs> increasing in height as they go. Like, come on. Yeah. And then, then you get the, uh, the coyote right in the middle of that. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, uh, one of the few times I really dig a square composition, uh, something about this one works and I don't know whether the photographer did it for Instagram, uh, or if that was the, the, you know, the composition and crop that they chose for displaying it anywhere. But, um, I will say like, for me, this one really works well here, uh, just because of all the other elements that kind of fit into the shot, you know, the mountains kind of peaking up slowly right there and then slowly coming back down here. Um, just the balance from top to bottom, you know, the coyotes in the bottom third, then you have kind of the band in the middle with the Brown and then the top third with these mountains there the nice stormy clouds and then bonus sun streaming in. That's another amazing lighting setup that happens so rarely when you get dramatic clouds in the background and then sun on your subject. Oh, it's just the best to see that in person. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That was, that's like one of my favorite parts about this. I mean, one, this is just one of my favorite photos I've ever seen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cause it, it looks like, it feels like a dream. Like it feels like a scene I would see in a dream. Um, yeah. And I think it's just like something about the fact that the ground is completely like untouched. Like it looks yeah. like it doesn't like you can't even see like the footprints of the yep. of the coyote. There's just this shadow. That's because it was just floated down, right? In the middle. <laughs> yeah. And then these trees, like there's no shadow on the trees. Right. Um, and the only other shadow you see really in the image is just like the shadow of the clouds on the yeah. on the mountain in the, in the back and. It just feels like it's like you just sort of like it just was placed there. Yeah, <laughs> and totally. just like you just came up and it's just like I don't know, it's like this this ghostly kind of mirage sort of image to me. Yep. And and something about yeah, like those trees just getting higher and higher. Um, just so perfect, the symmetry. And yeah. I love it. another thing that I really liked was um, just that when you look at the image, the sky, like the colors in the sky and the ground are like 
almost the same. It looks like a mirror image of itself. Like, yeah. Um, it's like that dark on the top. And then there's that same kind of color right where the coyote is. You're right. In the sky. And it's just like, uh, yeah, absolutely stunning. <laughs> and I do like the, I do like the, the square composition for this one as well. And the yeah. Center, kind of very symmetrical and, and just, yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. I, you know, I work with a lot of people and they're so often they're like, Oh, I'm wondering about like, if it's centered and they always forget, like it doesn't have, it can be centered horizontally, but not vertically, you know, like, mm. it, and, and this is a, a great example of that. Like this is, it's not a fully centered subject, you know? Um, cause the, the subject is definitely like on the lower portion of the frame there. And then mm -hmm. another thing I just noticed as you were mentioning that kind of lighting that's happening in here with the light in the dark is how cool that. And I, don't fully understand it except for it has to be with the way these clouds are falling that this area of snow is kind of darker than it is back here mm -hmm. and if if this if the snow right here was just as light as that the light hitting this coyote wouldn't make it stand out as much like it's darker up here in the foreground and mm -hmm. the sun hitting the coyote and it, it just pops out of that dark like that so yeah. it's just incredible that the lighting worked out that way i mean you could not get much better than that yeah, and like right where that line is is where all the trees are coming up and you're just like yeah wow, even real like, yeah you're right so yeah <laughs> that's true that's true as well i mean there's got to be like you said you can't see the shadows there there's got to be a little hill here that's creating yeah. that line that's you know just, that the trees are just behind um yeah. but yeah, it's so well done i know i want this i want this on my wall i need to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah totally you're like okay. wink wink <laughs> yeah <laughs> please <laughs> yeah, yeah all right sticking with some snow yeah i love the snow <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah oh i don't even actually know what animal this is what is this i me it's i think it's that that i don't know how to pronounce <laughs> <laughs> i think it's that <laughs> i'll just point i'll just let the photographer's caption speak for it there yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to attempt that nope, one. But nope, because I'll mess it up so bad. Um, it is, right? It's super cute again. Yeah. Um, I love those horns. I, I don't even know yeah. if I've ever seen anything like that. That's yeah, me neither. Um, yeah, again, love the snow falling. That's just like one of my favorite sort of elements that just makes a shot for me. And and that, that like light snow fall on the back and the head mm -hmm. there, like... And yeah, right along there. Picking up like really nice little catch light. And um, and then you got this like kind of lit up um, like little hairs underneath. Yep, there. right in here. Yeah. yeah, it's gorgeous. And then there's, you know, this this other line of light just on the top of the nose there. Mm -hmm. Kind of mirroring. I don't know if that's just... I guess that's the color of the... It is, I think, yeah. Of the animal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> I'm going to, all right, I'm going to go with, oh man, I don't even know how to say it. I don't know how, to, how do you pronounce that? Shamo, shamo, I pff, forget it. Well, I don't know, but hold on, the, the, the little thumbnails, oh, the thumbnails covering it, hold on. C-H-A-M-O-I-S. <laughs> I don't want, I don't even yeah. want to try you want, you want to give it a shot? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it would be pretty much similar to what you said. Sh no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what do you do with the S? Is it pronounced? Is it not? Shemoid? That's yeah. all right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It, does, it it's, doesn't matter. It's an adorable animal. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I also really love, like, the, the first thing that struck me on this one is, like, right off the bat, just nice, clean, simple portrait, but very unique composition on this. Mm -hmm. I don't see many things just, like, cut at the neck like that and that it works you know i love how he's just it's just jutting into the side of the image you know it's just bam it's there there's nothing else in the image nothing else in focus um that's the thing that kind of really struck me and then outside of that it's kind of just a soft image overall you know the color palette the background palette actually matches you know the the fur tones and everything like that so there's no it, it's almost monotone and just in the fact that it's just like a brown almost like a sepia tone look to it Mm -hmm. um but it doesn't look like it was made that way it just looks like those are the natural colors that were in this image uh so tonally it just kind of worked overall and then yeah just you know 
give me falling snow and it just makes everything next level. So <laughs> yeah, you know, totally all those little things that. just added up. Yeah. Whole nother level. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes. I love the composition. It's gorgeous. Um, a whole other Shamoy level. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a whole level of Shamoy. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait for. I hope he sends me a message and just says how badly I butchered <laughs> yeah, the name of like, this animal. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't wait uh, to find that out. Is, that is a good point about the composition. It's kind of like he's just sort of. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. Like, it's not something you see often like that, you know? Yeah, and I like. I kind of like the angle on it too because it makes the the horns look like i don't know like it's like one horn even though you know there's yeah. two and uh yeah i think that's i don't know i've never seen them like that so it's really neat it's gorgeous yeah it really another is another square composition it is cut, um, which i like i like for this image do you do you crop square for Instagram on purpose or do you play with it? Or do you like, will you share on Instagram differently than you would share anywhere else? How, how do you usually approach that? Sometimes I do. I feel like if, if the image is one that I created like intentionally um, so that I, you know, I, that I didn't want it in a square and yeah. that, you know, like that the framing is such that I want it like rule of thirds and mm-hmm. um, then I'll, I won't. Um, yeah. But if there's like, or if it's like a, a one that I'm really proud of that is meant to be, you know, cropped the way it's cropped, yep. um, then I'll, I'll, I won't crop it into a square. But if it's one, if it's a photo, cause I share photos that I think aren't even that good, um, just <laughs> a cool moment. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, totally. I think and, we all do. Uh, and so if it's like a photo that's not that great, or if it's like something you really need to like zoom in on and it's not really good for like Instagram because you can't see what's going on unless you kind of crop it in, yeah. then I'll then I'll crop it into the square. So, um, nice. so it kind of just depends on the image and like, you know, if you want to really show people what's going on, sometimes you have to, you have to crop it. You got to get up in there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, so oh. yeah, we, yeah, we recently talked about this uh, with Jess on the, the Wild Conversation show. So anybody listening to this that missed that, definitely go check that out. Um, but yeah, just ridiculous. I mean, come on. Like, and, and actually, if you want to hear the story behind this from the photographer, definitely check out that episode. Uh, but absolutely love this. One of my favorite shots. This is one I had been following just for a while. And when this came up, I was just like, yep, game over. You know, like he just, he should just put the camera down now at that point. <laughs> Cause to top this is going to be so incredibly difficult, but the symmetry of everything going on here, you know, perfect symmetry on the barn there windows, framing it up. And then, I mean, how nice of the owl to fly out smack in the center of that wing position absolutely perfect you know symmetry in the bird itself and then the flash mix going on here uh, one of the things that really stands out to me that i love about a photograph a photo like this when it's taken you know i mean this was definitely at night or close to full-on complete darkness but you can still see some sky separation so many photos at night and i get why uh it just, it's just blackness, you know, like it would just be kind of like almost the barn just going into black sky and you can't even really see the shape of the barn kind of thing. Uh, and I see that a lot in these kind of night flashed photography, uh, wildlife photos. And I, I get the reasons why, but when possible, if any kind of exposure can be made in the sky, I think to me anyway, it just gives it such a, a better look that when we can start seeing a separation between, in this case, the barn in the sky, or if it's a, a scenic shot where we can see the difference between trees in the sky, or so it's not to tr- the trees just blending into black and you can't even see what's going on back there. So I love the fact that he got this exposure um, to, to show some of that sky. And then those like the sky grayness there just matches that kind of grayness from where the flash is hitting the, uh, the barn doors there and everything like that. And then just the brightest thing in the image, that barn now coming out, just drop that gorgeous image. Yeah. Actually, I think that's just like a, like an owl mobile, just like set up yeah. with a intricate series <laughs> totally. of wires. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just jealous of this shot because it's insane. Who wouldn't be? Yeah. Uh, no, this is, this is another one of my like all time favorite photos I've ever seen. Um, and uh and yeah the the symmetry is just like so amazing and i like 
you know, it's like, it's symmetrical, but I really love that there's that kind of broken bit on the top that makes yep. it, that just like, doesn't make it quite perfect. Right. Um, yep. Cause I, I don't like the, like, you know, if that wasn't there or if the windows weren't broken, it just would be like a whole kind of different shot. So yeah, you're right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jess broke some windows. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Right. I was just going to, and they're, uh, and they're broken in different patterns there too. Actually yeah. look like this one only has one. This one's only missing one. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Like, well, so here's what he so could have done it better. Listen, if th this needed to be the missing panel over here to just match like that one, but yeah. you know, <laughs> just run some rocks. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's it's actually just like I can't get over the shot, and and yeah, I love the the color like in the sky, like you're saying, um, yep. and and how that mirrors the like the sort of flashlight on the on the barn doors. And it's just, you know, the, like, I don't know how this is even possible. Um, That's the other thing, right? The level of difficulty on an image yeah. like this is through the roof. It really is. So yeah, literally you know. through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, uh, I think, I think he had a, a frustrating time sort of setting this up. I think that's yes. you know, what he says, but, but yeah. it, you know, I can't even imagine capturing this and then just like looking at the back of my camera and be like, Oh my God. I mean, how do you not accidentally smash your camera out of excitement? You yeah. Know? <laughs> just, it's a once in a lifetime shot. Right. It sure. really is. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, I liked, I like to include this one because, um, because it's a little different from some of the other ones that I included. It's a little more set up, a little more staged, but um, but at the same time feels kind of not staged somehow. Um, yep. Just in that, you know, you have to capture that exact moment. But I know that he had like a, a really specific vision of yeah. what he wanted it to look like. Um, and he just nailed it, completely nailed it. Totally. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. yeah. And so like, good. what a perfect barn. <laughs> to be in this photo like imagine if this was like a nice well-kept barn it would not have the same feeling even a little bit you know it'd still oh, be a cool yeah. image but the fact that this barn is you know deteriorating to the level it is it's not you know it's not to the point of crumbling down and non-existent practically but it's got it's got the right shape and structure but yeah it's old and, and it's got such uh, just yeah. haunted house character <laughs> totally. it's like it's like such a perfect story to kind of tell, you know, the story of this barn owl and yep. and where they live and like what gets totally. in their name and that ghostly um, kind of thing. Because I I know that, um, you know, back in the day, barn owls were like they were like heavily persecuted and like and like they sound like I don't know if anybody's heard a, a barn owl before. It's not pretty. It sound like a woman <laughs> screaming. Yeah and um and they look like ghosts right uh, so yeah. just to have that kind of derelict barn you know like broken down kind of eerie and then this just like ghost in the middle is so yeah it's stunning so cool so cool all right well enough giving jess more praise we'll uh, move on <laughs> <laughs> keeping it dark and moody oh yeah i love this this is gorgeous it is yeah and is there, am I seeing a little bit of rain in the back yep. there? Yes, you are. That's my dirty computer screen. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, definitely rain. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. I love this. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to see, this is a, this is a different kind of. European shag. Yeah. That I'm used to seeing, I guess. Um, so I don't know. Um, oh, European shag. So it's not. Is that a cormorant? Is that the same thing? Uh, sim very, very similar. You know, same kind of behavior and everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it kind of looks like the like the double crested cormorant. Very much. Yep. Um, and uh, I don't know like how much of this is like post processing or, or like the colors, but I love that 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 moody feel with that pop of yellow. It's so yeah. nice. And. Um, and just the lines in this with that kind of curve of the neck going down yep. and then um, just that like you can sort of make out what's going on in the in the bottom of the image, but it's it's like really subtle and I like that. You got to dig your eye in to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the the light um, just sort of 
like it, my my eye definitely goes obviously because of the yellow um, mm -hmm. but my eye definitely goes to that like the catch light and the light just on the top of the of the bill there that's really gorgeous yeah. and i love yeah. that the in the background there's that kind of patch of lighter and that that's like right where the head is it's perfect yeah it's so good yeah, yeah that's great it's yeah amazing. I, I would guess that there's some dodging and burning going on here, but I mm -hmm. would also guess that it's not like, I don't think the photographer just made something that wasn't here. Like, I think the bones of this image were captured there. You know, he, like, obviously he photographed it on a darker background uh, because we can see the rain in the first place. And, you know, as soon as you have a lighter background, you're not really going to see that rain standing out. Uh, and, you know, based on what it's perched on the rocks there, it's probably just some distant rocks in the background. But um yeah, I'm such a fan of these moody, darker images that I feel like force you to take some time to look at them, to to appreciate everything that's there. You know, if you're if you're standing outside on a bright sunny day or, you know, in, in a well-lit room and you just glance at this on your phone, like this is all you notice right here. You, you don't even get to see all the the gorgeous feather details and like the, the angle of these feathers coming down and these subtle lines down here and then the, the big giant, you know, feet that it uses for swimming on the rock down like you don't see any of that if you just glance at this on your phone really quickly and or mm -hmm. even if the phone brightness is down too dark you know um an image like this requires like a good screen and to see it in the right conditions to be able to to really appreciate all of the um the subtlety that is in a photo like that and uh everything else you mentioned uh, especially with the yellow i just completely agree with and absolutely love about this image mm -hmm. yeah i love the rain in it as well i really I'm a fan of precipitation. In yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> do you shoot in it often? Um, yeah, I feel like I want to do it more. I definitely yeah. don't shoot a lot in snow just because I don't live in a very snowy climate. Um, Me neither. But I definitely live in a rainy <laughs> area. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, I'd like to get out and do some more, some more rain uh, photography because I think um, a lot of people will be like, oh, it's raining. I can't go. I yep. can't go shoot. Uh, yep. But sometimes those are like the best images um, that come from that. And uh, and I know that uh, like with me, I don't have like crazy expensive gear or anything. So I usually have <laughs> like I used to work on a tour boat and I used to have like I didn't have a rain cover. So I just like yeah. have like a, a, either like a like a doggy bag or like whatever yep. I can find, like, yep. <laughs> like a whatever bag, works like flowing in the wind. And it's, just like, <laughs> it's just flapping. Yeah. So, yeah. Like <laughs> I remember one time I was at Boundary Bay and uh, I just had like the worst gear on it. It was like snowing and I had like, you know, I've had like jackets that are just like soaking it up. I've got yeah. like a green jacket that's like draped over and I'm like right next yep. to this guy who's got like full camo. <laughs> ready to go and right like, and like the like neoprene on the lens and i was like uh -huh. cool, cool. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're the same yeah, yeah. Look... <laughs> I look same good. level <laughs> well hey yeah. uh suggestion for you and anybody listening too um on Amazon, I use all the time. I just have like a, a bunch of them. I leave in my car for myself and anybody I'm working with. Um, they're just like plastic bags, but they're made for the camera, you know, the camera shape. It's got a cinch on the front opening in the back for the viewfinder. They're like, I I'm not even exaggerating. They're like $2 on Amazon for like a couple of them, you know? So yeah. yeah, I just stockpile them and just leave them in my car. That way, if I'm ever like unsuspecting, get get caught in rain or want to go shoot in it um that they're just ready to go and it's dirt cheap to get them so yeah get those don't do what i do <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean but there's a style to what you do yeah. so you yeah, know, yeah yeah it's That's, a totally you know. intentional style <laughs> exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh speaking of dramatic light you know yeah. i I just saw, he just shared this on Facebook and I read a little bit more about it there with what he was talking about. Um, and he mentioned it here as well, but it was nice to see it just a little bit larger there. And uh, I, like the full, the full horizontal composition of it as well. It still totally works square here as well. Um, but the lighting on this, you know, I, I think that's, that's definitely been a theme of this episode is just some incredible lighting on some of these photos. And, uh, this one just nails it. Um, and also the, the color of the light, you know, it's, it's a warm flash. I don't know if he gelled it or if he just, 
you know, modified the white balance and it happened to give like just the cool cyan tones in the background and then the warm tones on the Bobcat there. But like, I mean, straight up looks like studio portrait, you know, out in the middle of the wilderness. And uh, the the thing I, I commented on his photo and the one thing that I absolutely love is just the angle of everything, like how the cat is looking up into the light right there. You know, light is coming in strong from up, you know, top right here. And the, it's just looking right into that light, perfect light on the, on the face to just give some good shape. So it's not like, you know, it's not flash from the camera's angle where it's just lighting up the subject and flat and dimensionless. Like we're seeing the shadows off the, the arm here and the hind leg and uh, you know, the shadow off of the, the head, but it, none of it's harsh, so it almost looks like I, I, I don't know if he says I, I didn't. Re it almost looks like a soft box over there. Like it's just an incredible lighting setup, and uh, and then bonus like full on reflection. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and I don't know if you watched the uh, he put did a little YouTube um, thing that I watched. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, it's like how he took the shot, but uh, you know, and I think he's been trying like for for like. Forever. A shot, this type of shot that he really wanted for like years and yeah. um he calls it the the bobcat saga and yeah. uh and he actually like was set up for a night shot this was during the day and yeah. and so he was set up for the night shot and then it kind of he used a flash and it ended up being like really overexposed and he filmed his like reaction to looking at the photo and he's like he's so it's really cute he's like yeah. he's like so upset because he was he thinks that he you know ruined this this perfect opportunity and then he goes back and 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 um kind of saves the image a bit in, yep. in post-processing and realizes that he's now got his you know most favorite image to date and um wow. and then it's like really the look that he wanted and uh and I just love, yeah, I just love how it actually um, turned out with like the color and the mood. It looks like a right? museum, like totally. Like, it's like something about the just the pose and the and the the light on the front there, and and like there's even a catch light in the reflection, which is just yeah. Um, and it just the the whole mood of the shot is um, is really just quite something it's a very museum-y to me and, that's and yeah, such a great point YouTube, yeah the uh the like full like not cropped for instagram version and that one's really cool as well um but it, i yeah. think it does work um like this because yeah it's um and i like that there's that that branch there but it's not obstructing the bobcat at all it's just kind of right like, there yeah yep perfect and, angle uh, with the leg then you got this one up here that matches like the angle in the front there it's just yeah ridiculous yeah, yeah very, <laughs> very moody kind of like kind so of a moody. theme going now with the moody yep. um moody yep. shots these are i wonder if we'll break out of that we shall see yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. uh it's so funny that you said the museum thing because i it I, it didn't quite click with me until you said it but a hundred percent right it totally looks like you know a, a, su a stuffed cat in a created scene in a museum yeah. and it's lit that way and that's what the viewers walk up and see like oh this is a bobcat in its natural environment and he took this out in the wild like just incredible yeah yeah it's just like um and i think for me um i really wanted to include like a, a camera trap um shot because i've been really wanting to um learn about camera trap photography yeah. which i i haven't kind of delved into yet but but this is like so inspiring to me uh, yeah, to no look kidding. At this image and to be like, wow, that's what you can get if you yep. really, you know, put the, the energy and the effort into um, capturing something. So I'm, yeah, I'm now I'm all stoked up to go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Start buying more gear. Get ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my> God. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience where you completely botched an exposure on an image? but was, was able to save it. Um, cause I've had it both ways. I've had total botch, like not coming back. And then I've had, I have one specific one that I can remember that. I mean, just while I was shooting into the sun and it was, so it was sun on the front of the lens. And I just, I was in manual, like full manual and just botched the expert, like overexposed the heck out of this image. But, um, thanks to these amazing digital cameras. Now I was able to pull it back, 
throw some crazy contrast in it and get you know, same kind of thing at the time it was like one of my most favorite images of a hooded merganser uh that i had taken um that was like just fully i mean if you looked at the original and the final you're like that there's how's that possible kind of thing you know it's yeah. just crazy yeah i have well i have one of a saw wit that i took um and i don't actually really like historically edit my photos very much um at all um okay and but with this one um i kind of underexposed it and i was able to like to um kind of save it and and it, now it's one of my favorite um nice. photos but when i think about mostly i don't mess up exposure i mess up like sharpness because i usually shoot oh. <laughs> handheld and i remember i being, thought you were just setting up to say i just don't mess up exposure and that's what it sounded like I, you were saying yeah I, just I, I, that doesn't I, happen I, I mess up sharpness all the time and i don't know why i keep doing this but um i mostly shoot handheld probably because i've been working on on um through boats where you just can't have a tripod sure but also because i haven't had like the money to have like a good tripod pod so yeah. i have this really really terrible tripod um that i've thrown in ditches before <laughs> and uh yeah so i remember i was in banff and i was uh driving the bow valley parkway and um I saw something kind of come out of the forest and I was like, what is that? And it was pretty far away. And, and so I just sort of like pulled over and, um, and I put my binoculars up and I was like, that, that's a wolf. And, and wow. that's what I was looking for. And there's this gorgeous white wolf comes out of, and <sighs> walks along the other side of the road and like right up to my car and I'm like shaking and I haven't even looked at my camera settings. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and they all like they all turned out sort of blurry and i was just oh, like no. i remember being like so stoked but also just like oh and then That's tough. and then i and then it kind of like it worked out because just the the mood of it is sort of like it looks like a ghost so i was like okay yeah. well that's fine. <laughs> it's it's okay. creative. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was a creative, <laughs> intentional. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally did that on purpose. <laughs> yep, yep, totally. But I mess up, I mess up that all the time. I don't gotcha. know why I keep doing it. Uh, I need to get a tripod. <laughs> I don't shoot much on a tripod either. Um, I end up, I'm on a monopod more often, but, uh, you know, when possible, when I have the light enough gear that I'm using, I, I'll go handheld too, because it's just so much easier. Tripods just yeah. can be a pain. I think if I have a really nice one, it'll be like, it'll take me a bit to get used to it, but yeah. I'll get used to it. Yep. But I find like, with if I don't want to be like messing with something and then miss the moment, you know, totally. um, you know, so, but I, I've been doing, I had last spring, I did a lot of like barred owl photography. Um, there it would help like late yeah late at <laughs> yeah. night and, and i'd go yeah. and look at my images and they're all just like blurry like they're all like, creative nice job yeah, yeah. good job yeah <laughs> so yeah all right yeah. here we go keeping it moody oh nice <laughs> okay what is what, what bird is short eared owl oh short eared okay cool yeah it almost looked like a barn owl for a second but it does kind of have that vibe yeah. i agree um yeah that's awesome um yeah i love shots like this i love small in the frame kind of like the whole mood and just like kind of a landscape shot but yeah you know the birds obviously the focus in this shot but um but it's also about the the environment and mm -hmm. um that's something that i feel like Especially on Instagram, uh, I mean, obviously it just doesn't translate as well on Instagram sure. and, and people like to share portraits and stuff and those are awesome. But I love photos that, that you know, you're not disturbing this owl, you're just watching it do its thing and you're, yep. um, and you're taking a, a picture of the scene and where it lives and where it hunts and... There's um, more, there's more story to this. Yeah, and I love that. I love shots like that and I love the light on this this wing here this rim lighting yeah yeah it's just perfect right on that edge yeah it's so nice and it kind of just sort of mirrors that that edging on the on the um sort of hills in the back there yeah and yeah and it looks like there's sort of like i don't know maybe like a little bit of shine to this like little tree here yep 
which I kind of like too. It's sort of like, like standing out like the owl. Um, yeah, I love that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, there's so many layers to this image. Yeah, and like my eyes kind of going all over the place. Yep. I like that because it's sort of like mimics the way that sh short-eared owls sort of fly. Yeah, fly totally. Over the, um, over the landscape. So yeah, it's awesome shot. Yeah. And then there's subtle lines that still really like, to me, lead me into the out, you know, there's this subtle line here, this, this arching tree right there, this diagonal comes down, this diagonal comes down, like all kind of still bringing us into this area anyway. Um, and yeah, I pretty much agree with everything you said, uh, especially about the small and frame showing the habitat stuff. I, I love when people just, you know, say, this is a great image. I'm going to share it on Instagram as I captured it, as it was meant to be. And, you know, if people can take the time to appreciate it, great. And, you know, if it doesn't do that well, that's okay also, you know, because this is this is how I captured this. This is an image I like, and it doesn't have to be close up. Um, so, so I always appreciate when somebody kind of pushes through maybe that, that questioning of, oh, should I share this on Instagram? I don't know if it's going to do good. And they just go for it anyway. Yeah, um, you just got to share it all. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, another thing that I love doing this show because I get to hear some things that uh, I, I love when somebody like yourself just mentions something. And as soon as you mention it, and like, it's so obvious, but it, I never consciously crossed my mind, which was how that that dark light edge on the wing on the the tree and then on the you know every one of these ridges back there is kind of a, a mirrored lighting effect and mm -hmm. uh yeah that's such a neat thing to to kind of pick out and notice and just give some connecting elements between subject and background in the image and it works so well so uh, thanks for pointing that out that's an awesome little kind of uh detail that you notice there yeah it's gorgeous love this. all right really mixing it up now we're going yeah. underwater bright <laughs> colorful vivid uh i yeah. dig it yeah that that's really kind of cool my intention with with uh with picking this guy nice yeah um incredible rays of light yeah i mean first thing that smacks you is the colors in this just ridiculous colors uh, but not not push too far you know mm -hmm. um <clears throat> I think and any more and they'd probably just be like, Whoa, that doesn't even look real, but you know, they're, they're just vivid, but still within the realm of natural, which is awesome. Um, absolutely love how the tone, like the colors in the fish, which, what are they? Uh, they're chum salmon. salmon. Okay. They, All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the, the blue and greens in the fish itself kind of just mirror these colors back there. And then like everything, like the whole school of fish, and the angle of this one all just leading into this direction, which kind of like comes right into the, like the light beams and everything, like everything is just funneling my vision right into that top left corner. Uh, yeah. There's just so much that uh, it, it feels like this is the perspective of the next fish back that you're part of the school, yeah. you know, like totally. you're just, you're not a photographer here. You're not, you're just, you've, you're embedded in this school of fish and you're just heading upstream with the rest of them. And it's such a cool vibe to this image. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say about, um, that's my favorite thing about this image is that a lot of, you know, a lot of like pictures I might see of fish or even underwater pictures, you're kind of just like, it's like a portrait, right? You're just yeah. like looking at the, at the fish, which is beautiful as well. But the way that she's um, framed this shot is like, you're the salmon right behind this yep. salmon and and it's just like you know um because these guys have such a they have such a tough journey um yeah. and they're just so resilient as a species and i know like april as a photographer she's she's really passionate about what she does she's really passionate about salmon and um and something about the fact that she created this image but also just um you know there's the, there's a story there and yeah. and it kind of speaks to the the resilience and the the trials and tribulations that they go through um because you feel like you're just in it you feel like yep. you're you're there you're the salmon you're swimming with your 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 buddies <laughs> totally yeah and you're gonna go die and rot <laughs> yes <laughs> a horrible death yeah <laughs> Uh, but, but this yeah, doesn't have that. that vibe to it. This is bright yeah. and cheery <laughs> yeah. and colorful. Yeah, this is before <laughs> all that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a positive thing, but it's also mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know. It just has a, 
uh, a kind of mixture of feelings for me when I look at it. But um, sure. I love the the leading lines, like you're saying, the light. Um, yeah. I love underwater images. Um, I always wanted to be an underwater photographer. And so, yeah. And I like this, this salmon here in the foreground and this, this um, fin here and just the texture. So good. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And yeah. You know what? And if we, I just noticed if you took this, like cut this out, flipped it up here, it's basically like another one of these sunbursts right yeah, there. Yeah, totally. The lines kind yep. of mimic all over the image and even just in there, like the chum salmon have these really like beautiful kind of striated yeah. um, scales there. And, and yeah, they're, they're kind of going that way and then the lights going that way and it's just stunning. Yeah. So, it really works well. So nice. Not an easy task ever to photograph a single animal or, an, or a group of animals where nothing's facing the camera, like everything facing away, going away. And mm -hmm. to make that work, that is an achievement right there. You know, yeah, I don't totally. think I, this is one of the very few times I've ever seen that work so well because of the fact uh, like what we both mentioned that you just feel embedded in this image, you know, in, in what's happening there. So, and that's how it stands out for me from other yeah. images that I would see of, cause it's like, you know, you, you always have to have the eye in it and it's like, that's the, yep. the focal point of the image. But with this, it's like, no, this isn't about that. It's about the story and, um, and the color. And yeah, it's, it's, I think really, really well executed. It really is. Well, and how easy, right? I mean, how many photographers, and I know I would probably have done this, you know, there's just as many fish just off camera to the right. Like all she had to do was just turn that way and they're all swimming right at her, you know? Mm -hmm. So that like, how is that not the instinct to just capture that? And I'm, I'm sure, you know, most likely she did capture some that way, but yeah, to, mm -hmm. to pick this one out and share it like this is, uh, is very well done and, and very thoughtful. Yeah. I love that about it. All right. Ready for the last one? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, what is this? Hold on. I got to move this thing. Oh, it's a white wing white scoter. Thing. Yeah. I have only seen, I think I've only seen white wing scoters like once or twice. Um, yeah, gorgeous stock. Yeah, they're really cool. And, weird, and, but gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they're, <laughs> yeah, this is really cool actually with the, I don't even know like how, how, um, they've created this image because it looks like something's obstructing. Like, is that mist or it's a little wave? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it just kind of like dipped down in the wave behind this one in the foreground. Okay. Yep. But it's really, yeah, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I think it really works with the shot oh, yeah. because it's kind of, it's kind of a vibe. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> totally. Um, and I like, the the sort of white line under the eye there yeah it's beautiful and just kind of how that sort of looks like the same kind of like you know um look that is happening here where this this white line is kind of yep coming up over the of the scoter there but um but it's yeah it's really cool it's like really really stark contrast obviously and then there's yeah. that little bit of kind of orangey pink with the with the bill and it's kind of it's kind of ghostly as well this one's really this one's really neat and i like that there's not anything else going on um in the background or anything zero there. distractions there <laughs> yeah it's just, yeah it's really cool yeah definitely yeah, I, like I always find it so neat when a photo can be captured that is basically black and white image except for one area of color. And it's just like that was a natural scene. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. manipulated that way. Like the only area of color in this is that little pop of, you know, pink orange color on the bill there. And like how cool that the rest of the bird just has no color in it. And then it was shot with the high key look with the, you know, the waves just kind of overexposed like that. And uh, yeah, it almost, it totally reminds me of like you know images that are classically done in snow where that snow foreground just kind of blends into the subject yet this was handled with water which is really neat yeah i really love when photographers you know take risks and take um like creative liberty with their with their photos and they they try to do something different um and artsy and not like 
you know, not your just your typical bird yep. on a branch, whatever. Um, yeah. And and it just really makes for like interesting images. And and when you look at that in comparison to some of their other images, sometimes it like I don't know. It's like it's cool to have that stand out. Totally. I mean, stand out image. Um, yeah, no doubt. Yep. And it's a great example of taking advantage of what probably many people would consider less than ideal weather conditions, you know, like this kind of stuff happens in overcast light because it's just flat overcast light, you know, and it's like, what else are you going to do? <laughs> like if you just expose this properly and do a standard exposure where you have detail in the water, it's just gray water. There's probably detail in it. That's going to be distracting. It's just like, it's not going to be a good image in any way yet. Uh, a little thoughtfulness, and you know uh, creativity with the really low perspective so nothing's in focus that's the other thing right nothing in focus except for the subject because this foreground wave is blocking anything in the front and then the background because of the low perspective is just blown out of focus uh, but you know just going with that lighter exposure to just let every all that detail go out of the water is just such a a, a perfect creative use of poor lighting and and thoughtful photography so yeah, I, I like what you mentioned about that, because I think, um, you know, the like the standard would be like if if something's not quite right or how you want yeah. it to be, just be like, ah, like, OK, yeah. I can't check today or, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, I used to um, work on a, a boat doing um, bear viewing. And I remember like mm. a lot of times um, just the way that our tour is lined up, we'd be like doing most of our viewing kind of smack dab in the middle of the day and the light is so harsh oh, and yeah. it's like so intense and i remember like you know a lot of photographers would come and just be like oh like you know yeah. and then um i was lucky enough to be able to photograph a bit on those trips and and i started being like okay well you know what can we do here because yep. the light sucks um and so then you end up just kind of playing around with it and, and creating these images where you're just like completely changing your your exposure and um and and then you end up with these kind of really cool like dark bears with this like rim lighting and yeah and, and it gives you the opportunity to you know if the conditions aren't in your favor necessarily to play around and be like how else can i how else can i create this image and um and have it be something interesting and and maybe look at it from a different perspective which is what i think this guy um or this photographer has really captured well here um, yeah she nailed it on this one yeah mm. totally agree and and i completely agree with everything you said like i feel like this is maybe not every time but most of the time there's an image to be had there like you yeah. can find something if you just sit there with it long enough and work and and think uh you know a little creatively and push outside maybe the comfort zone or just what is the standard and uh yeah, it's a great example of it. And it's cool to hear your experience doing that too. So yeah, I that's think it. It's... Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, no, no worries. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a, a great, a great point. And, and I love that image. I love all those images. The, they're awesome. Yeah, this was a fun one. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, definitely. What's, uh, what's coming up for you? You got any, any plans, any near term, uh, near future photography plans? Um, I think, yeah, I've got some, I got some ideas brewing, um, okay. definitely waiting a bit for the weather to change in the spring to kind of settle in a bit more. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking for some barred owls soon. Nice. Um, there's tons of them where I'm living now and, um, I've been really wanting to get more into photographing, um, amphibians and, and reptiles and oh, cool. I haven't done a lot of that, Me neither. Uh, but I have a macro lens and I've been like, I had a lot of fun playing around with that, um, last summer and I was photographing insects. Like I had a ton of fun photographing these water striders and, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I'm kind of hoping to just sort of switch up my focus a bit. And I'm also really interested cause there's a ton of mink on Bowen, mm. um, in sort of, of, finding and i really want to find a mink den i think that's a bit of a a, a big ask but yeah <laughs> but, um, hey but gotta try right tons of them here so i'm really hoping to um to kind of focus on those guys as well so that's awesome. kind of my, 
my more immediate plans for photography. Sounds and, great. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. yeah nice. What about you? Um, heading to Florida in a week and, uh, going to spend three weeks down there doing some photography and running some workshops. And then as soon as I get back, it's spring warbler season and it's going to be like a month and a half of just straight shooting almost every day. I have, yeah, I have like 25, 26 days booked back to back, just nonstop, just, you know, taking people out, photographing warblers. So, um, and then right after that heading to Alaska. So I got a good spring lined up. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Really so great. definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. That um, sounds so good. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Really looking forward to seeing what you come up with, with those plans you just talked about. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be excited to see what you have. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, same here. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, as always, trying to make a new one of these available every Saturday and please do us a favor and share this with your friends and fellow photographers that helps get the word out. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.